Okay, what we have here is a set of real uh, stress strain data, and you can see that the shape right here is a little bit unexpected, but this early sort of shelf region is typical of um, uh, low carbon steels. So don't be surprised if you run into to this shape again. And there is kind of a linear region in the front, but you can see that there's two different slopes. So whether or not this is the real slope or this is the real one, it's, it's not clear. Um, in any case, uh, we're just going to work with it. I'm going to presume that this is the slope that we're working with here. And it's a, a uniaxial tension test. Cylindrical specimen uh, gives you the gauge length and the diameter. So the first question is, how much load must be applied before the specimen permanently deforms? So in order to answer this question, you need to know that on this graph, where it permanently deforms is somewhere around here. So is it the beginning here? Is it at this peak? Is it over here? It's not exactly clear, but I want to call it this first deviation from this initial linear region, this one right here. So it's about... Oh, um, maybe 250 megapascals is the stress at which it permanently deforms. And we know that the stress is equal to the load divided by the original area. So since the specimen is a cylindrical specimen with the gauge length of 50 millimeters and then a diameter of uh, 10, We can compute that the area from uh, that value. Oops. So this this value, uh, we just need to know that the area is equal to pi r squared equals pi times five millimeters. Five times ten to the minus three meters squared. I'm just going to rewrite that as um, twenty-five pi times 10 to the minus 6th square meters is the original area. And the question is around the load, how much load before it permanently deforms. So we know this is the stress at which it yields, and here's the area. Let's compute the load. So the load, P, is equal to the this P, is equal to the yield strength times the area. So it's equal to um, sigma yield times A naught, or 250 times 10 to the sixth newtons per meter squared times 25 pi times 10 to the sixth meters squared. And I wrote it this way so you can see that the meters squared cancel and that the load is going to be in the units of newtons. So um, reducing the numbers outright on the next line. So we have 25 times 250 times pi. Oops, pi. And you can see that this 10 to the 6th cancels with, you can see this is supposed to be 10 to the minus 6. I've taken the area over here, 10 to the minus 6. This cancels with this, so I don't have to worry about those terms. And I know that it's in units of newtons. So it's equal to 25 squared times 10 times pi newtons. What is 25 squared? It's like 625, right? 625 times 10 is 6,250, times pi newtons, what is this, times 3, 3.14, this is roughly, I'm just going to ballpark this, 3 times 6,250, this is close to uh, 20,000, 3.14, between 19 and 20,000, I'm going to call this 20,000 newtons. You see I only have uh, one significant figure here. So if you use a calculator, you'll probably get a more accurate answer, but this is just first cut ballpark figure. About 20,000 newtons is the load.